three, five, four, three, two, one, and welcome to episode four of Photo for Me TV. Hello, everybody, and it's Guy Fawkes Day, so we're going to be letting off some fireworks for you just before the um, podcast started. And we have got a guest um, photographer on the show today. We've got Simon Wilkinson. His uh, passion is dance photography, but he mainly sells landscapes on our site. So it'd be really interesting to talk to him later if he's got any tips or tricks for people that are watching the show. And um, we're gonna, we've got on the show today, we've got Mike, Mike Wood there from uh, customer service and uh, all the, the jazz in the background. We've got Dan filling in for Mark on member success. And also Dan's gonna talk a bit about social media and things that he's uh, been up to with that. So without further ado, we're going to pass you over to Mike and tell us all about the, uh, the things that are happening there. Yeah, so before we start, although we kind of already started, um, big shout out to the photographers that sold in the last seven days. So we have Jim Hamilton, David uh, Thompson, Roger Dutton, uh, Richard Phelan, Mike Hughes, Chris Evans, uh, but not I don't think the, the real the Chris real Evans. Chris Evans. Yeah, that's Maybe. it. <laughs> but I'm sure this is the real Chris Evans anyways. Um, Alan Deward, uh, Riza Sina, Stefan Lipton, Mike Bell, Zachary Bloom, Andy uh, Gibbons, and Gary Sanford. So congratulations to all you new sellers. A big list. That's a great yeah, list. It is a big list this week, yeah. Yeah. And then um, on top of that, we have uh, this week, our new feature is our top five sellers of the week, which uh, consisted of James Bigadike selling 10 of his images, Chris Smith selling four, uh, Daniel Santillo and Andrew Roy also selling four, and then Paul Appleby selling three, respectively. So well done to our top sellers as well. So Massive well done, congrats, well, well done, done, guys, and and obviously congratulations to everybody else who has sold, but we haven't had time to shout them out. <laughs> well, thanks for that, Mike. And um, yeah, we've been we've been busy in the background. A lot of the stuff we're doing at the moment on improving the marketplace um, is a little bit quiet because we're. We're working on some big projects, working on collections and a, a new shopping cart. Um, but we have rolled out a few uh, minor enhancements this week to the members site. You may have noticed the new vitals box, which uh, when you look at your photographs, it's going to be on the right hand side on desktop, a little pink box with a, a heart in the top of it. And in that section, you can see the status of your photograph. So whether it's approved or waiting approval. Um, if it's approved on the website for sale, it will also show how many products are available for that picture. So based upon the aspect ratio of the photograph, it will automatically find the photographs, so the, the products that it's up for sale on for. So it's a useful tool. And uh, we've also put in things like the DPI and the image size. So you, just in case you're worried about the quality of the picture that you've uploaded, you can double check it there after you've uploaded it. Um, one of the top sellers this week is uh, Daniel, and um, we were just talking about his portfolio before we recorded the show. And uh, the wonderful thing about Daniel, he's been on the site for about four years, but he's certainly understanding now how the keywords work in relation to sales. So when you look at this photograph here, I'm just opening it up on the, on the other screen there. <clears throat> you can see that Bracelet Bay and Mumbles Lighthouse are the keywords for that photograph and when you when you search for those keywords he's right at the top of search at the moment because we have changed the algorithm to increase the opportunities for newer uploads so um yeah he's, he's certainly understanding how he's doing that um we're going to hand over to mike now mike is going to talk about um all things success wise <laughs> yeah so products and what's selling so this week uh our top I guess searches on the website were uh, Abernathy Forest, uh, Guernsey, Scarborough, Scottish Mountains, Liverpool Waterfront, and Clay Windmill. So if you have any images of those in your portfolio or any on your camera that you need to upload, get them up because people are looking for them. Um, as promised so last week. Sorry, Mike. I think it's, um, again, quite a lot from up north, right? Mm. So I don't know if that's still in correlation with the lockdown before the national one got announced that we're all part of today or he or um you know they're still knock on from that but quite interesting that it's a lot from up north still yeah we do get quite a good amount of uh traffic or web traffic from up north so it would make sense because it, it's also a very pretty part of beautiful part of the country yeah. so yeah um, we, yeah surprising. we have been sending a lot of pictures of liverpool's waterfront as well 
Mm. But the um, yeah, that that does seem to be going really well at the moment. So there's obviously Christmas cutoffs coming up as well. <clears throat> yeah, as promised last week, I have Christmas cutoff dates for everybody. So for the frame prints and frame mounted prints, the cutoff for UK deliveries is the 15th of December uh, and then 8th for international. Uh, for prints, canvas prints, as well as acrylics, the cutoff date is the 18th for UK and on the 13th for international. Uh, speaking of Christmas. That's, Decem that's December, though. It's not November. That's in December. Right? Yeah, yeah, December, 100% December. Yeah. Um, so we have Black Friday to go through and everything like that. So we're going to get super, super busy. Um, speaking of busyness and Christmas, we are already getting orders for Christmas gifts. People are telling me that this is their orders for their nephew, aunt, uncle, niece, son, daughter, whatever. Um, so do start marketing your work because uh, people are starting to buy early this year as compared to previous years where they waited till closer to Black Friday. So People are buying, people are looking to buy. So do spread within your network and get yourself marketing. Um, and last but not least, uh, with the national lockdown happening, we are still up and functional. We are COVID safe. Uh, supply chain and manufacturing are still a go. Um, we are pretty much uninterrupted. So business is normal on our end. Beautiful. Good. Thanks very much, Mike. So um, Daniel. So yeah, unfortunately, Mark's not here with his beautiful presentation. So we're gonna gonna narrow it down and just talk about this one story in particular, which caught us all off guard. Um, there was a guy called Mike Bell. He actually joined the site four years ago, and for what reason he he didn't upload? So his account's been sitting there for four years without a single upload. At the start of or the end of last week, sorry, he uploaded three images and within three days uh, one of those images sold that's on your screen now and so it's gone from four years to uploading three images and in three days he's made his first sale and you know you, you can't make that up guys you just gotta you gotta get uploading if we um if we have a look at the keywords he's actually used for that image as well because we have to bear in mind that this is probably his first, well, it is his first time ever uploading. On his first upload, he started his keyword paragraph with Lancaster Bomber, which is, of course, the main thing anyone's going to search for. And you can see in those keywords there, he's got commemorative fly, uh, outdoor, sky, airplane, aircraft. All the keywords are entirely relevant to the image. So... He's taken his time to get them all right, and within three days, he sold his first image. So, congrats oh, to him. Yeah, that's that's good going, isn't it? It's really good news. So yeah, guys, in four years, <laughs> down to four days. So so go ahead and get uploading. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it just shows, doesn't it? And, and this week has been a real uh, surge of new sellers on the site, mm. uh, people that had never sold before. So we're definitely. Uh, getting bigger exposure. Uh, I think the advertising campaigns are, are definitely working for that. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to, um, we're going to get, try and get a guest on the show, right? Yeah, guys. So this week, as John mentioned, we have Simon Wilkinson. He's a, a member guest who reached out to us from the Facebook group. He's passionate about dance photography, but he sells landscapes and other subject photography on the website. We're going to Get him in, he's going to tell us about his experience selling online and a bit about him in general. So, five, four, three, two, one. I can hear you fine, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we definitely. hear you loud and clear. You sound much like an airplane pilot, though, with that headset. <laughs> <laughs> The only one I've got, I'm afraid. Sound like you're about to radio something in. We take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So, welcome, Simon. Thanks Thank a lot for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you. You, you know, John. The uh, yes. what? I'll tell you what, John. Mike, why don't you guys say hello? Uh, no. <laughs> hello. Yeah. Hi, Simon. Hi. Uh, Oh, good stuff. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining because um, this obviously is, is very new um, doing the podcast. And yep, I think yeah. what we're trying to get to the point is that it really does encourage the community to to come together and learn from each other. And um, yeah, yeah. Just guess talk number about two, your passion, Simon. really. Guess number yeah. two. 
<laughs> yeah. I tell you what, Simon, before we kick off, why don't you just tell us a bit about yourself? You know, what's your what's your background with photography and how did you first get in, get into selling your stuff online? Okay. Um I suppose I've I've dabbled in and out of photography for probably about thirty years. Um since since I was given an old film SLR camera by my dad. Um, oh what, what camera meant, was it? It was a Practica BC one. Ooh. No way. I had a Practica from my dad as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I got mine. So... I got mine because it had a dodgy back on it. So ah. every third photograph had a big orange yeah. flash across the middle of it because it was letting light in. Yeah. Um but I got that fixed and, and actually I really enjoyed that camera because it had a number of lenses. It was a little kit with a number yeah. of lenses and a flash gun. Um, and and I, yeah, I enjoyed that. And then I lent it to my brother and he broke it. Uh, so I, I then moved on to a bit more up-to-date um, technology <laughs> with a, a, a Nikon SLR that I think I just fished out of the Argos catalogue. Um, nice. Then went, eventually went digital with a, a bottom of the range Nikon. and. Um, I suppose got more serious probably five, six years ago, um, mainly because of my daughter's interest in dance. Uh, she dances a lot. She does competitions. And I've kind of become the dance school's official photographer over the last few years. Uh, uh, so we, got to, we do shows, we do displays and things like that, and I get to, uh, get to take those photographs. Um, that's, that's quite interesting because my daughter uh, does ballet as well. and. Okay. Yeah, we've, we've done the, the Sunday mornings driving around the countryside. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I then got myself landed last year at about two hours' notice. Um, I got a call from the uh, from the principal of the dance school. They were at a competition, saying, "Can can you get can you get up the road to the competition? There's been a mix up with the photographer, and they they need a photographer to take shots of the kids dancing. You know, they're looking for a professional photographer." And I thought, well. What are you asking me for? <laughs> because I, I'm absolutely not a professional photographer. But um, yes, of course, no. I, I, yes, I said no. yes to that. I said yes to that. And then um, so I went off and, and photographed kids at that show for a couple of days, which was really, really hard work. I, yeah. I, I never appreciated how difficult that was going to be. Um, but then on the strength of that, I got to do another show and then I, I, the same one again last year. Um, and I would, I would have been doing that last week had COVID not yeah. intervened and, and stopped it. So, and, and I managed to sell a few from those. So, you know, a few proud parents have got my photographs up on the, up on the wall or the, the mantelpiece or wherever they want to put them, you yeah. know. And uh, so, uh, yeah. It's, nice. uh, so were those, you sold them physically just to people you knew at first? Um, no, they were just to random individuals who wanted their kids photographing. Ah, oh, amazing. Yeah. So, That's you know, I just stood at the back of the room and invited people to come and see me if they wanted photographs. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, oh, nice. Managed, managed to sell a few, which, which was a, that was quite a good feeling, making a, a, a bit of change. It, it, yeah. In no way paid for itself, but, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it to make a living. So, uh, it, you know, it was, of it's, course, it's yeah. a good feeling, a good feeling making a sale. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's a big part of the community, right? We're all hobbyists, we're all trying to trying to just own in on our passions. How how long yep. did it take you to um start looking for places to sell online, you know, aside from your your sort of normal circle of dance and stuff you come I, across? I suppose I, I probably I probably stumbled across a few sites that were selling pictures and uh, probably three, four years ago and thought, you know. Why, why not give it a go? Because everything now is digital. It, it mm. to create an image, yeah, and and get it ready costs nothing other than my own time. Um, so I think it became the the challenge to myself. It, it's almost a two step challenge. One one to see if I could get anything accepted, and two to see if anybody would then actually buy it. Uh, how did how did it go? The, the, the um, I, I was I was more than happy to get some pictures accepted um yeah. <laughs> I, I think mainly because i'm i'm probably my own fiercest critic so of course yeah you know course. My, my best photograph is my next one you've never met mark <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no it was it was nice to actually get that kind of that impartial third party view yeah. that something yeah. was considered to be good enough 
course. Yeah. So, have you have you had any luck on photo for me? Have you? I I have sold. I've been on photo for me for about three and a half years, um, with nothing, and then I've sold two in a couple of weeks. Recently. Yes, recently. One was mid October, and one was last Friday afternoon. I think it was that. I got an email from you, John. (laughs) (laughs) um, yeah i think that i mean we have spent a a, quite a lot of time working on the search algorithm and i think what it is is people can actually now find the photographs where right that that had been really holding the the business back the the marketplace back everything and i have spent months working on it (laughs) (laughs) but that was actually way back in um march april time when when the first lockdown started, yeah, um, yep. I thought, well, I, I, there's nothing else I can do. Um, so, <laughs> improve, let's, let's, improve let's, the site. Yeah, let's try and improve the site and see yeah. if um, if that works. And I think that's what's happening now. I think um, it's it's gaining momentum, uh, which is really exciting. It's exciting for everyone, really. I, I yeah. suppose a lot of people have probably got a bit more time on their hands as well, haven't they? Because more yeah. more people are are at home. I mean, I I'm finding that I've been working from home since March. Mm, and yeah. I, I do, I still do the eight-hour day that I was always doing. But th- there's more time either end because there's less travelling about. So there is a yeah, little exactly. bit more free time. Yeah, you have more time for mm. life, don't you? Yes, you know, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, absolutely. It's difficult because we, we we can't get out and and see friends and and family at the moment. But you've got more time elsewhere. It's it's, uh, it's very. Strange circumstances. It's very strange circumstances. I'm sure it will be, yeah. you know, an optimistic outcome next year. But I, I think it's going to be the summer before we see that. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly, quite possibly. Well, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, no, that's 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 <laughs> all way, 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 way too. Oh depressing. no, way it's gone all, got all down here. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about that anymore. <laughs> how, okay, so how how has this? Because it is lockdown day today from, from this yes. point on. That is it. Yep. I'm not leaving this room. John's not leaving that room. <laughs> <laughs> You're not leaving that brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how is that going to affect your hobby? How is that going to affect your photography plan, especially with dance? Because unfortunately, that's going to... Yeah, I'm, I mean, <laughs> we, I'm lucky enough that I've, I've got a little bit of space at home um i've I've kind of got enough gear to have a bit of a home studio set up we can't really do any dance shots but at least i can do some some nice portraits and things like that with the yeah. my wife and daughter um the most recent dance shoot that i did was the first time in i've now got access to a studio space of, of my own you know the dance school moved into a brand new studio ironically a week before the first lockdown um but oh, okay. i can have use of that for photography whenever i want and of course it's been shut basically ever since i've, <laughs> I've got in once this year and and taking some uh taking some pictures so uh, yeah it'll stop that um uh, but can still go out to exercise to a degree so i'm cool. gonna get get what out about, the camera yeah what about your local area well where where do you live what's what's the I, landscapes like <laughs> I, I live in chesterfield in derbyshire so we're out on the edge of the peak district so there is plenty of landscape um you know there, there's there's plenty of good scenic places to go within 15 20 minutes drive oh, which, which is okay because nice. that's not having to travel any great distance um yeah, yeah. I, I suppose the other thing i've been thinking about is you know i'm i'm allowed out to exercise so as i live close to the town center what what that will actually look like mm. you know in the in the sort of yeah it, it should be it should be throbbing at this time of the year, shouldn't it? It's the, it's the run up to Christmas. It should be it should be packed out. They should be turning the Christmas lights on. There's all these sorts of things that have always happened in the past, but it, it's going to be deserted, and the views around the place are going to be different to what we've seen before, and, and possibly we may never see them like that again. Um, yeah, yeah, it could exactly, be an opportunity exactly to that. get you know get some really yeah. unusual, um, desolate sort of cityscapes which could be really interesting without tourists and things in it could be quite that's nice. yeah yeah that's yeah, that's kind of I, what i've been thinking the last the last week or two definitely i know some photographers based in london that are just are on the initial lockdown got some really strange city shots that they would mm. just never have the opportunity mm. to get again yes. and um yes yeah I, I think you should 
definitely capitalize on that because um, it was Sebastian, who was our first guest on the show, he took the the first image he sold on photo for me. He took from his bedroom window of of his town, and that that's been his only sale. And someone okay. from that town wanted to get that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you have that chance to go around your local area while it's quiet, I, yeah. I'd capitalize yeah. on that and and yeah. give up loading that a go yeah. because that, that's interesting. The second picture that I sold last week is also a shot from my bedroom window here. Really? <laughs> so everybody should start taking pictures out their bedroom windows. Absolutely. You like? I'm, I'm just thinking about the bedroom window now. I'm just. <laughs> there might be there might be a bit of cash out there. I don't know. Well, no, I mean, Ch- Chesterfield has has one landmark that it that it's known for, which is the Crooked Spire, and oh, um, okay. and that spire is floodlit at night, and it is the thing you see from the front of our house because because of where we live. It's probably about a quarter of a mile away. Uh, wow. And it stands up above all all the remainder of the houses. Um, so that view is really unique because no one else can have that view because it's in your house, right? So yeah, yeah, it's, it's. I mean, obviously, you can see it. You can see a similar view from different angles around the town because mm. because the church is up on a bit of a bit of a hump. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I just opened the window and and there it is, and it. I, I love it. You know, I, I can gaze at it night after night because. It is so well lit, and it's so, so bright, so brightly lit, and and very twisted. Yeah, it's amazing. And you can see the twist very prominently from uh, from the side that I'm looking at it from. I've got I've got the photo up now. My yeah, I'm looking at it as well. It'll be on be on screen now. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I think what's what's interesting is it the the crooked spire that sold. Yeah. Yes. But funnily enough, that only has that only has seven keywords. So. Someone very specifically was hunting mm. for that shot, and I mean that just goes to show that if if there's someone out there that has that you know emotional connection to that image, they they're gonna hunt for it and they're gonna look for the one that suits them the yeah. best. I I think that one is probably yeah in in terms of market, it's probably very limited in that it's yeah hmm. you know it will appeal to people that live here or have lived here or. Or, or know the place um, because it is the probably the most distinctive feature of a small town. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. So, yeah, and, and it, I suppose that way it has got a bit of a bit of unique appeal, but a very limited market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so about about photography in general, then, because this is just something that was fascinating me. Um, how successful is your human? photography your human subject photography versus your landscape uh photography i i I would say more so um i Mm. i find i find landscape photography to be the most difficult Mm. um probably because i'm not sure whether it's that i can't or i won't put the time into it that you need Get, you know the, the right minute <laughs> you, you don't get a fantastic landscape shot just out for a walk with the dog no, you mm. don't. You, you you have to put in a lot of planning and a lot of effort and and spend a lot of time in a particular location you, you're not necessarily going to get it a one day two days or, or five or ten visits to a spot you might never get the shot that that you've seen in your your mind's eye or you know there, there are so many factors that need to come together all of which are outside of your control. Yeah. And yeah, that's difficult. In in terms of uh, people, I, I find that much easier because I can I can like them and I, I think I'm just a control freak. <laughs> so if so if I'm in charge of it all perfectionist. I can, I, perfectionist. That as well. But that's I would go more with control freak. Um, <laughs> you know, I I can control the lighting and everything else and I, I can take a I hope half decent portrait or a half decent dance shot, you know, in, in that sort of studio environment. Um, and, and I think because I'm a, I'm, I'm an engineer by profession. So it, it's almost kind of a, a mathematical challenge rather than an art form. <laughs> I got you. You know, so, so setting up lights and, and getting the lighting right is, it probably is, but I don't really necessarily see it as an artistic process. I see it more as the, you know, getting the solution to a problem. Well, we've yeah. we've had our problems with that in the past, haven't we, Dan? Oh, <laughs> don't, get, don't get started. 
<laughs> five <laughs> five lights to um <laughs> to fill <laughs> one subject. Yeah. <laughs> it's the the, yeah. the product photography, right? We're yeah. using shiny frames, we're yeah. I'll take a photo, I can see my face in it looking back, I'm like, oh. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> yeah, that's Product that, photography is immensely difficult. Yeah. Hard yeah. To find. yeah. 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 It is. Uh, looking for it. So you're not just looking at the subject. So first of all, you look at the light, then you look at the subject, then you've got to look at reflection. So like the, yeah. the acrylic, that huge acrylic sheet that we're like moving around, all sorts of problems with reflections on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Thanks, but yes, so Simon, we've got to... Um, we got to start wrapping this up. It's been amazing having you on the second guest. I suppose before we go, do you have any advice for anyone selling their images online? Do you, you know, what um, you give to people based on your experiences so far? Stick at it and try try a variety of of different sources. I mean, I, I've got quite a few, um, and I've had quite a bit of success with Adobe Stock although you only get generally pennies for that. But, yeah, yeah. you know, it's mm. if you want the challenge, go for it. it yeah. It's easy. It costs, it costs you nothing to set up. Um, you can put stuff out there. If, if the photos are good enough, then they will at least get offered for sale. And be patient, I think. That's probably the main thing. Yeah. However good you think you are or, or not, you know, it, it might happen overnight, but chances are it will probably take a while. I mean, yeah, of course. There's there's a lot of competition out there, right? And Absolutely. We're, we're trying our best to make it as easy for you guys as we can, but, you know, we're, we're in the customer's hands. <laughs> but it, it, it's still, it, it is a very good feeling because you've you've got, what, just over half a million images now? Yeah, five. I think on the site, yeah. And, and, now, yeah. And, and out of those half million... Two two people have picked up on mine, and they've they've actually handed over good money for them. So uh, there you go. You know, it, you go. as a as a hobbyist photographer, that's that's a good feeling. That's a nice feeling, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A very nice feeling. Very nice. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks note, very much Simon. for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. It's been. Um, we we'll hope to see you in the Facebook group, and um, we're going to be watching watching your member profile from now on. We hope to see you uploaded soon with this lockdown Crikey. coming. No, no, no pressure then. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> we'll be watching like a hawk. <laughs> Make sure the lighting's yeah. right. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right then, Simon. Thanks Thank a lot, care. matey. No <laughs> problem. See you later. No problem. Thanks then. <laughs> bye bye. Where are we on to next? Uh, you're up to me now. I, I'm next. I think, um, you know, just based off what um, Simon was saying about his passion for dance photography, um, we had some new members join the Facebook group and we're unsure about, you know, what it is we actually sell on Photo For Me and the sort of stuff we market. And I, I think Mike had something to say about quite a successful photographer. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is um, a guy by the name of Eamon Nasser. Um, he's had a bit of success on photo for me, but I'm just saying more international. It's just more recognition that he's um, been uh, featured in a, a magazine uh, called uh, Photo Nordstrom magazine in the September edition. And it goes over his, um, his experiences um, in the photography realm. But um, it's more or less talks about his 30 years in fashion. It's about a 25 page spread. Um, Eamon's a critically acclaimed photographer for, inter uh, for international fashion, architecture, erotica. Um, he's traveled the world uh, taking pictures of different people and celebrities, as well as architectures. He's been featured in Vogue, Bazaar, Elle, Cosmetol, Malton, like really high-end stuff, like really internationally right. recognized magazines. Um, and... So yeah, and it's just a really interesting article. It talks about his experiences and learning from other photographers and where his art is exhibited and what equipment he uses. So if anybody's interested in reading more about Eamon, uh, check out his profile on Photo For Me. Um, I would say it's just a little bit rated R for some of his pictures. Um, so pre-warning there. Uh, so not safe for work, really. <laughs> um, but I, mean, um, I think the ultimate point is that, you know, we're open. We're open to all, most forms of art, right? We're not going to narrow it down to just landscapes. While that's super popular on the site, we we are open to a lot of other forms. Other so, forms of art, as in photo photographic art. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so check out the article in the uh, 
for the Nordstrom magazine if you're interested. Yeah, cool. So and is that kind of wrapping it up now? What are you? I think I think just to wrap it up, um, because we've had quite quite a busy show with Simon. Uh, we just want to say that from Monday next week, we're going to kick off the editor's choice on social media. Um, a bit about that, we're going to make it way more consistent this time round. So there'll be there'll be a time it goes out every day. We're going to be looking for outstanding images images that suit the seasonal periods for example uh you know we would have undoubtedly done a bonfire night one today if it was to go out today we're gonna we're gonna really try and help whoever is the editor's choice get a sale that's going to be the main the main that's our, point that's our goal yeah i think in the that, past john i think in the past whenever we chose editor's choice I, I think like in that 24 hour period i think we've maybe sold like two or three so that's that's our benchmark dan you think we could break it yeah oh hopefully we have a hopefully. good crack at it can't we yeah and, gonna... um yeah of course tomorrow morning we've got the the live announcement the live draw the prize draw so uh, that will be going out live and um, i'm very very excited about that looking forward to that yeah excellent guys well we'll see you next week take care yeah, be <laughs> safe everybody bye, bye. Well, guys bye, see bye. you later